I have watched him in the White House. I watched him in the Congress. And I watched him as the President's Chief of Staff. I have to tell you something else that is a good quality in a mayor. He was always fearlessly honest in meetings with me. He was never, he never shirked to say, sometimes in extremely colorful language, <laughs> when he thought I was wrong. Now, let me tell you why that's important. You would be astonished how many people go dumb when they walk in the Oval Office. The lights go out, they're just overwhelmed. And they think they were going to tell the president that he was all wet about X, Y, or Z, and then they just can't bring themselves to do it. It happens all the time. You would be astonished how many people think, well, they live in Washington, and they generally agree with what the president's doing, but they want a long career. So they try to think about, before they go in there, what does the president want to hear? And that's what they try to say. So the first two or three days I was in office, I brought all the young people, I had all these young people on my staff, and I brought them all in and I said, listen, if one of you ever comes in here and tells me what you think I want to hear, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. If that's all I get from you, you might as well all quit and let me run this place with computers. <laughs> the decisions that the president has to make are obviously more difficult, otherwise they'd be made down the line somewhere. And there's arguments on both sides, and the president has to hear them. He got that from the beginning. He will be fearlessly honest with you. Yeah. If you've got a problem, he'll tell you about it. I don't know how many times he came in the Oval Office and thought, well, Bill Clinton will sure send me home after this conversation. And I love everyone. You get nowhere as president if somebody just tells you what they think you want to hear or they don't say what is in their mind and heart. He will never do that to Chicago. He will take care of you. Look, we're in a fix still. And the state and local governments of the country, especially the big cities and a lot of the states, I've been watching what's going on with the Illinois budget, with the New York budget, with the California budget. This is a problem. And the Congress can, uh, and the President can only stimulate the economy so much, and you can't print money like they do. So it's a really difficult time. The good news is we all get that, and we know we're going to have to get through it together. This is a really big job. And how you meet these challenges will shape not only the lives of the people of Chicago, but the future of Illinois, the future of the Middle West, the future of the entire United States. You know that. Chicago is critical to America's future. There is this sense that it is always the best organized, the most can-do, the most barge ahead of all of our big cities. And you... You've got to keep that going. So you need a big person for the job. Now, Ron's not even six feet tall. <laughs> he probably weighs about 150 pounds dripping wet. <laughs> but in all the ways that matters, he is a very big person for this job. 